Hello, welcome to this week's episode of Investment Trends, where we discuss with you the news that we're seeing and reading about the stock market and the economy. So far this week, we saw two major inflation reports that came out. The Consumer Price Index report came out on Tuesday. The Producer Price Index report came out on Thursday. And unfortunately for investors, both the CPI and the PPI index reports were higher than expectations. So on Tuesday, with the CPI reading, we did see that mildly higher than expectations. However, the stock market still reacted positively to this information. So even though the consumer price index report came in slightly higher, we still saw stock indexes return positively for the day. However, on Thursday, with the PPI report coming in almost doubling expectations uh, for what economists thought that number would be at, it started to cause a little bit of uneasiness in the stock market, and we saw all three major indexes drop on Thursday. So what could this potentially mean as we are about a week away from the Federal Reserve making a decision on interest rates? So many economists are now predicting that there were potential interest rate cuts that would occur in June. However, with the inflation report information that came out this week, that is more likely getting pushed back another month. And now they're calling it a 50% chance that the Federal Reserve would cut interest rates back, uh, could cut interest rates in July. So for many investors that are, were waiting on um, interest rate cuts to potentially help with stock market prices, might make real estate uh, prices go up as well. Uh, could be in the case, be in the bucket of that may not happen for um, several months later than were originally anticipated. And right now, it's looking like there's no legitimate reason that the Federal Reserve should begin to cut interest rates because the economy is still going strong. In other news, if you are paying attention to cryptocurrency, we saw Bitcoin going on a tear recently. So it went above its 2021 high so over to a price point of over 69,000. And again, this is a new record high for Bitcoin. So this rally is a little bit different than in the past. Uh, in the past, what might have drove Bitcoin up was maybe adoption by a, uh, a retailer that's saying they might be using Bitcoin or other news like that. Um, however, this rally has been caused by the approval for Bitcoin to be invested in ETFs. So for those of you that think you might have missed a rally or might be uneasy about that, um, just know that there's no new use cases for Bitcoin. So no one is going to a grocery store and using Bitcoin to buy their groceries. No real news or you know uses for what you can do with Bitcoin now. Um, However, with investors now having access through Bitcoin, through exchange traded funds, it now becomes a lot easier and potentially millions of more investors can now invest in Bitcoin, which is currently driving up the price of the cryptocurrency. Fundamentals have not changed. Uh, as, as anything, it might make it somewhat harder because now these financial institutions are you know, starting to mine for Bitcoin. Um, they're easy. Exchange traded funds are starting to own Bitcoin. So uh, who will knows what will happen in the future of that? Uh, but like I mentioned, this rally, it's on quite an impressive run over the past couple of weeks. So we mentioned on Thursday, the stock market dropped. So it did snap a uh, three-day rally for the week. Um, so a couple of stocks to mention for this week. Uh, one of the stocks that had one of its best weeks is Oracle. So it had a its best day since 2021 when Oracle's their earnings report came out. They beat expectations. The stock jumped almost 12% on Tuesday. Um, back to, it hasn't had that great of a day for the stock market since 2021. Um, other stocks to keep an eye on would be um, retailers, grocery stores, in particular uh, for Cincinnati locals looking at Kroger stock. So Kroger had a great earnings report last week. However, the PPI reading that came out on Thursday uh, caused the stock to drop for the day. Um, so looking at companies that may have some of their margins squeezed, so that would be companies like Costco, uh, Walmart, Kroger, obviously. Uh, if inflation remains sticky, if it remains high, these stocks might not fare as well. Um, Costco hit a, hit a record high recently. Kroger hit its 52-week high last week. Um, however, we could see a bit of a pullback in those types of stocks. So shifting gears as well to a, a recent trend that's come out in uh, TikTok videos, on social media, 
Um, and, and it's essentially um, somewhat poking fun at one of the uh, biggest names in the financial media. And that name is Dave Ramsey. So um, as far as the, the financial space goes, there's there's almost no bigger name than Dave Ramsey between his books, his videos, his courses, his podcast, his uh, radio show. Those are all his podcast radio show are number one in the financial services sector. Um, he has definitely impacted millions of lives. And now there seems to be a growing trend amongst younger people um, of, you know, somewhat he's getting a little bit of backlash. Um, so my take on Dave Ramsey is I think he's, he provides great uh, insight. He provides great tools, great resources for people that are overwhelmed with debt. So overwhelmed with credit card debt, overwhelmed with student loan debt, his techniques and his strategies are perfect for people looking to get out of that type of debt. Uh, however, Dave Ramsey has definitely made a name for himself by being polarizing. So he has to have a solid stance. Otherwise, he wouldn't get the notoriety that he's currently getting. So he has a hard and fast line on no credit cards. Um, even if you can get credit cards reward points or cash back offers, um, he says no one has ever gotten rich off of rewards points. And to an extent, he is correct. Um, but for those of you that use credit cards responsibly, I think it makes a lot of sense. Also, the math will show you that if you have a mortgage and it's a low interest rate mortgage, your money might be better invested someplace else than at a two and a half to three and a half percent mortgage rate instead of you know plowing more money in and paying off that mortgage. However, all in all, uh, Dave Ramsey, I think, provides great framework uh, for people. His his baby steps are great. His books have been great. Um, he can provide great tools. Uh, I think a lot of people eventually, once they get financially stable, um, somewhat outgrow his strategies, uh, and they can look to do other things. You know, like investing, investing in brokerage accounts, maybe keeping a mortgage as long as you're smart with your debt using your credit cards wisely to get those reward points, things like that, uh, once you've kind of gotten out of out of debt and have built up a good enough emergency fund. So one quote that we read this week, don't buy the needle in the haystack, just buy the haystack. So that came from the uh, infamous founder of Vanguard, Jack Bogle. Um, and what he is alluding to with that statement is, don't try to pick individual stocks, instead own the entire index. So own a low cost index fund. You'll own all the stocks. You won't have to try to pick the winners from the losers. And I would say to an extent, Jack Bogle was right. If you're not willing to put the, the will, skill, and time into your investing, then for most people, you know, an index fund might make complete sense. Um, lastly, piece of information that I thought was um, pretty interesting is that what we're seeing a trend in the real estate market that a new mortgage is actually now higher than monthly rent. So there was a study that came out where uh, the average monthly multifamily rent is a little over $2,000, whereas the average monthly new mortgage payment is a little over $3,000. So we are seeing a bit of a gap between what you can get if you're a renter, as opposed to if you went ahead and tried to buy that property or buy that piece of real estate, um, you, you might be better off renting instead of owning with where interest rates are currently at. So that's it for this week. Appreciate everyone tuning in. Leave comments below on any suggestions, any, any stocks that you've been watching um, or anything else that you might have found useful for this week.